Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. If you thought the insults hurled between North Korea and the United States couldn't get any more ridiculous, then this week set a new standard in farce. The rogue nation sentenced President Donald Trump to death because he apparently called their leader, Kim Jong-un, short and fat. Ordinarily, this kind of behaviour would be dismissed with a chuckle. But 2017 has seen tensions on the Korean peninsula rise to the most dangerous level ever. The threat of nuclear war is real and Australia is in the sights of the North's missiles. After months of negotiations, Nine News correspondent Tom Steinfurt was given rare permission to travel to North Korea. There he discovered a country whose people are not only ready for conflict, but fully aware it could mean the end of the world. This is North Korea as it projects itself to the world. A nation marching in unison, ready to defend its leader at all costs. Do you think a third world war is a possibility here? Who knows? Our country is nuclear armed and Donald Trump is going to attack us. But tonight, we show you a North Korea you've never seen. As we head inside the world's most secretive state at a time of unprecedented tension. Who is the enemy? American Yankees. American Yankees. Wow. In the midst of a nuclear showdown that has implications for us all. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. With unpredictable leaders and an escalating war of words, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. It is the most serious threat to world peace in decades. In the moment that you launch 10 missiles that are equivalent to 1,000 bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, who will survive in this world? Not Australian, nobody in the United States. The world will end as we know it. It's rare for foreign journalists to get access to North Korea at the best of times, let alone right now. Be careful with your cameras. I will tell you where you can take photos or not, OK? An ever-present team of minders carefully monitors our every move on a highly orchestrated tour led by government official Ju Jong Hyok. The problem is that most of the Western people have no idea what is going down here. They don't know the reality of our country. What is the reality? Our reality is that we are enjoying a normal, a comfortable, happy life here, and we have our own way. So I think that with single mind, we can pave the way to our final victory under the wise leadership of our respected uh, Supreme Leader Kim Jong Un. I was last in Pyongyang two and a half years ago, and the changes are striking. From new streets to grandiose buildings like the SciTech complex, which celebrates the regime's technical achievements. Full of the students who are going to read the books. At its heart is a replica of a UNA rocket, a forerunner to the intercontinental ballistic missiles, which can now reach the American mainland. Of course, we are very proud of the result of the space rocket and also the, the other uh, successes in the science field. Because it means we are developing and we are now becoming yeah, space power and that kind of yeah, economic power we are ready. Pyongyang is the showpiece capital of one of the poorest countries on Earth, home to the nation's privileged elite. But make your way out of the city and a very different North Korea is visible, one seldom seen by foreign eyes. We're on our way 200 kilometres east to the city of Wonsan, a bumpy five-hour journey through dirt-poor farmland and dark tunnels. We stop briefly at a coffee shop where the walls are plastered with pictures of North Korean missile launches. 
So are you excited when you see that they've tested yes, a nuclear that's weapon? It. That's it. It's excitement. I am. That's beyond my greatest excitement because we were weak, but now we are strong. Single-hearted unity, uh, great leadership, and we have the ICBMs. So I, I usually say to Donald Trump, come, come, come to me. I will choke you with my H-bombs. Wow. In Wonsan, we find fishermen jostling for space to catch dinner. At random, we speak to Kim Yong Chol, who's lived here for 15 years. Donald Trump is just like a dog, barking at the moon. Immediately, he casts the conversation to politics. As you've seen on the TV reports, Trump is saying crap like he's going to kill us all. But we have our supreme leader. So even if Trump brings all his forces, even if the sky falls, we are not afraid. With its beaches and relaxed vibe, Kim Jong-un has earmarked Wonsan as North Korea's future holiday hotspot. But overseas visitors are few and far between. On the headland out there, the regime has built this huge, brand new international airport because they're actually hoping to set up a billion dollar tourism industry in this country. But given the current climate, it's no surprise that not a single passenger plane has touched down there yet. The site's not going to waste though, because while no planes have been taking off from there, plenty of missiles have been. Wonsan is one of the regime's key missile test sites. Almost 40 have been fired from this area as North Korea, or the DPRK, develops its capability to strike targets around the world. Is there anything that the world should fear from the DPRK? Because from my perspective, the thing that scares a lot of people is the fact that you are now armed with nuclear weapons. I think that not at all, no threat at all, but there is one threat. Uh, it is uh, one threat in the world. It is from not DPR Korea, but from Donald Trump. <laughs> so I think that um, we must get rid of this threat. We must get rid of Donald Trump, I think. How then do you feel when you hear Donald Trump say that he wants to destroy your nation? Donald Trump is going to turn our skyscrapers into the ashes. Total destruction of Korea. Every citizen, every member of the Korean nation is got ang has got angry. Oh, war maniac Donald Trump. So if Donald Trump did decide to attack your country, what would happen? I think that the next step will be the destruction of United States. No matter how old or young, Everyone here marches to the beat of the regime. North Korea's brightest students are rewarded with a stay at the Songdewan Children's Camp. There's plenty of fun on offer from football... Hello! ..to rowboats. They don't seem very sure of the Australian guy. But like kids everywhere, they can't get enough of video games. What are you teaching these boys? Do you teach them the technique? I teach guerrilla warfare, the tactics Kim Il-sung used to vanquish the Japanese army. What's striking is that the children also see these games as practice for war. What do you like about this game? I'm so happy to kill Americans. So you dream this is an American that you're shooting? Yeah. Americans and Japanese and South Koreans, they are the enemy of the Korean people. Time and again, we are shown the carefully staged performances of Pyongyang's most talented students. There's a rigid discipline to growing up here that's hard to understand as an outsider. At Pyongyang's Foreign Studies University, students learn English from tapes with a distinctly American accent. Now, though, our class project was to investigate some 
conventional styles of housing and report on one. We're allowed to speak to classmates Ik Hyun Rim and Lee So Hyun, although our minders insist we avoid anything political. What changes have you seen in Pyongyang over the last couple of years? Uh, under the wise leadership of the respective Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un, uh, our country has changed into a very luxury and modern country. And yeah, in the last couple of years, there were many miracles uh, changing our country into a purpose, purpose country. Yeah. And our people are enjoying benefits of socialism. But one seemingly simple question is much harder to answer. For you learning here, you come to the foreign studies. What is it about the rest of the world that interests you so much? Rest of the world. Uh, all the other countries, you know, foreign countries. What, what, what are you interested in from foreign countries? That's <sighs> mm. not that simple. Um. I don't quite get you. Uh, get your. <laughs> okay, um. but to, for foreign studies, you f you study you foreign foreign you know, languages. Foreign languages. What what is it about other languages, other countries that you find interesting? Mm -hmm. Should I say so? No special comments. <laughs> OK. If they say what they want, they will be in trouble. They will be kicked out of Pyongyang. If they say, oh, I don't like my leader, and then oh, North Korea is a bad country, then no, it's going to be huge trouble for them. Sung Ju Lee knows all too well the expectations of the regime. Now living in Seoul, he escaped from North Korea at the age of 16. What would happen to you if you went back to Pyongyang tomorrow? What would the government do? <laughs> Public execution. Seriously. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about North Korea at now, right, with you. This will be on TV. So this interview will be shown in North Korea and exactly. they'll say this man's a disgrace. Exactly, exactly. I mean, if I go back to North Korea, first of all, North Korean government maybe torture me, and then they force me to announce a certain kind of a script written by the government. You, you don't seem scared by this. Well, actually, somebody has to tell this. I mean, the truth. I mean, the North Korean government tried to hide a truth. They, they tried to hide the sky with their palm, but they cannot hide everything. Coming up, the world will end as we know it. But isn't that madness? What is the North's master plan? Just over the border from here, North Korea has more than 10,000 rocket launchers ready and aimed. The US military on high alert. If war broke out tomorrow, are you guys ready to go? I believe we are. And the South living under constant threat. You must dread the day that you might have to actually put one of these on. That's next on 60 Minutes.